Yo, yo, how's it going? Welcome to the Dog and Pony Show Rewind. It's not the Dog and Pony Show, it's Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Lights, presented by the Dog and Pony Show. I am your host, Rhymester. This is episode number two, number dos. I want to thank you for tuning in to episode one. Tonight we have two special guests. We have C-Mac, a very, actually one of the most energetic performers I have ever seen on stage. I think he's a fitness coach because every time he performs, he gets people to do jumping jacks. And I'm not going to lie, I do jumping jacks with him too. And I think he's a dog whisperer, but he won't admit that to anybody. <laughs> Guest number two, we have No Montana. She's a very talented music artist. She is the founder of Up Next Magazine, an online publication which is currently under construction, but it will be up very soon. So any artist you want to get in soon, man, make sure to hit her up at No Montana. We'll have her IG and everything. And I just want to shout out all the guys behind the camera, our director, Scott Anderson. We got John, a.k.a. Impulsive. We got Ben, and we got the homie Keem. Because you can't do anything without a team, T-E-A-M. Team stands for Together, Everyone Achieves More. So while y'all think about that, I'm going to get into one of my guests, and we'll be back on Friday Night Lights. <gasps> Boom. That's it. I'm going to lose my pants. <laughs> We are back with the Jumping Jack Man, C-Mac. Hey. C-Mac is a hell of a performer. He's a hell of an artist. You can catch him riding around Chicago with his drop top, going crazy. One of the illest cars you've ever seen, I promise you. What's up, C-Mac? How you been, man? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, man? I caught you upstairs making beats. Yeah, so slight, so slight. Looping. I'm looping, man. I'm <laughs> looping. He's not a producer. He's just a beat maker. No, nah, C-Mac. So I met you about two years ago. Two, no, that may, might be more now. It's almost like almost three. It's about three. Shout out to Radcliffe. Radcliffe Music. Um, how did you link up with Radcliffe? Man, shout out Radcliffe Music, a.k.a. Conrad. Uh, man, shit. It was actually, man, through like some family you got friends that are family, and you got family that are not, that are friends. So it's like I had some friends that are more like family, and then uh, he ended up, you know, graduating, going to college, man. So then he ended up like inviting me to the to North Park. Uh, shout out North Park, man. Got some good times up there. But he used to uh, invite me all the time, and we used to just have smoking sessions, man. Just ciphers, and all we used to do is like just play the games, smoke, and like have ciphers. Then I end up uh, being introduced to uh, Radcliffe. And then, uh, man, it, ever since then, it was history, man. That's all we used to do. That's all we knew. We still doing it. To this day, still doing it, just at a higher level, higher scale. So, man, dude, you made a huge just jump from when I first met you to now, performance-wise, music-wise, lyricism. What do you think it was that really made you just go all in? Because some people just be like, um... I'm going to dabble with it. I'm just going to be like a little hobby or something. And, you know, you know, you told me before, like, oh, you know, I do this for fun. But then it turned to my a switch almost hitting you where it was like it went from fun to like a lot more serious. And you were like just on it every day. So what is it that just triggered in you? It was like, you know what, man, I could I could do this shit. Man, um, I think I would say that I guess something always was in me, like, because I will always like freestyle and it was like one of my one of my old school homies like man he the one got me to start rapping like hear him rapping just freestyle then I just used to I just like man just used to hear him and I'm like man let me try it man you feel like let me, let me go ahead and try I could put words together too and everything and it's crazy because like how I started off is like like I just used to like try to rap about stuff that I just did or stuff that I see that's how I was started off rapping like freestyling was anything that I seen in the room or right in front of me or what I just did or what I was doing that's how I would freestyle but uh, man, uh, chaos. <sighs> Don't worry. We'll get we'll, back to yeah, it. We're gonna get back to the show. But no, you just recently dropped a new video. Is that correct? I did. I, I feel like you were just heavily uh, involved with um, the whole production and the shooting of it. You yeah. talk more about that? I, had a I like to like. I don't know. I don't want to be like over micromanaged, but as an artist, I feel like it's important to be able to like you know what direction you want to go to. Um, a lot of videographers have told me like, oh, it's really good that you kind of know what you, what you want to do, what you're doing. Um, so yeah, I was hands on. Uh, I created the whole like plot kind of story thing. And then Night Runner, his name's Cameron. He's from Ohio. So he came all the way down to shoot it for me. Um, I, I thought of, like I was gonna be some type of Drake dude, you feel me? Because I had a lot of experience with women. I like that was my thing was is with women. Like you know that's where my name, you know, the origin of my name. So it's like 
Yeah, and it was just a rude awakening, and everything changed. Like, cause it went from me, like I guess that was like for me, like just like hey, hey, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go here and rap this and sing this, and then it was like the seriousness with like you know you had that talk with me, you like man. Hey, to, to the audience, so I come in the studio. I probably don't even really know this man for like it's probably going like in a month, and I see he's there consistently, and you know he's singing with Radcliffe and stuff, and. When we come out the booth, you know, we'd be smoking whatever, we'd be freestyling. And he's just ripping the freestyle. And I'm like, how come I don't hear this, like, on record? So I pulled him over and I'm like, yo, T-Mac, like, I know you want to sing, dude. I'm like, but I want you to utilize and invest your money smart. You know what I'm saying? Because you could, you could go home and practice your singing and that's free. But you're rapping, I'm like, you got to get that on point. And at first you were a little hesitant, like, no, nah, man, uh, I do my thing singing, you know what I'm saying? And like, but I told him, like, bro, just trust me. Like, you, I'm like... Don't throw the singing away. Just just practice it, you know what I'm saying? Study others. But in the meantime, like, hit these bars. And then pff, a couple weeks later, he got came in with, like, five, six tracks, just bars, 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 bars. And still had a little singing into it. That's when, he, when you brought in Jada Artist. You know, she covered up a little bit. And you guys have been making fire ever since, you know. So shout out to you for just growing and evolving, honestly, because I always tell people, you want to look at two people who really grew and never evolved? I was like, look at C-Mac. Look at Kiddo and look at Jade Artist. From the moment like we brought them in to now, you're an artist, you're producing, you're co-hosting, you're behind the camera, you're on camera. You know, you're just doing a bunch of things. It's just, and I don't see you slowing down at all. You're going to hit me up next week like, yeah, I'm a manager too now. <laughs> I'll put you on a show. I got you. Nah, but, uh, at the, man, first I got to give credit to God, but it was like, man, like, like what whatever evolved is doing, like man, it makes it so easy to like man, like I tell Rhyme Star all the time, man, aka Rhyme Star. You feel me? Like, man, that uh like what 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 we do in the studio, what they do like as a collective is like it should be documented because it's like it's like the first of its kind almost, you feel me? So it's like I feel like this is like breaking in a whole nother era, starting a whole nother wave, a whole nother movement. So it's like, and, and it's a good thing because it's like definitely in Chicago because people, people be getting on and that's cool and all. You don't want to stay in Chicago. So much hate in Chicago, so much BS in Chicago. But I'm tired of hearing that because there's BS everywhere. That's everywhere. So it's like, I hate when people try to use that, that excuse. Like, and then, and then the thing about it is like, man, Chicago is the place to be. But I don't know why people like, man, I don't, like, man, I'm not even a true Chicago, but I've been here long enough to know that like, Chicago is like unique and it's one of a, it's one of one. So it's like, man, being here doing what we're doing, promoting peace, love, and happiness, definitely during these times, but even before these times. That's what people need to understand. Like, people wait till something happens or something drastic to happen to make a, a decision. As a person who moves to Chicago, how do you feel about the stigma that Chicago has where it's like, oh, everybody hates on one another. They're like, what is it? Nobody can make it out of Chicago because it's not, like, unified. And I would say, like, man, that's, that's, that's some BS. Don't get me wrong. It's... To evolve, man. That's like, damn. That's the. That's crazy. That's like, you know, it's not no coincidence. That's the name of the collective. But ever evolve, you know, look it up. But it's like, man, all, all any social media. But it's like, yeah, man. It's like what what we doing here. What what they do here. It's like, man, anybody could do anything, man. You feel me? I seen it. Like, even this man right here, Conrad, you feel me? Radcliffe Music, you feel me? Like, man, I'm talking about starting off as artists, even myself. Like, I can't really say for myself because I'm not a beat maker. Right, yeah, but you're going to be you getting there. You're getting there. You're going to be there. But, man, no Joe, they make it so easy. You come in here, you learn, you feel me? You utilize your time wisely, and you could do with any. You could do anything you want, man. And they promote it. You know, you go to other places, DJ be like, nah, well, you know, they don't want you. It's almost secretive. They try to keep it hidden, and that's what, that's what we try to get out of, man. We try Trying to promote knowledge and promote peace, love, and happiness, man. Like, pay it for. You feel me? So it's like, man, we want everybody to succeed, man. That's the difference. All right, let's go back to your origins. You said you're not originally from Chicago. Where are you originally from? Uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Shout out Naptown, man. Even though they was on some semi-racist stuff, man, I still love you, man. I still have a place for you in my heart, man. How old were you when you came to Chicago? Uh, it's crazy, man. It's crazy because, like, I'm, I'm a true Chicagoan because even when I even before I resided and I, I relocated here, I will always come to Humble Park, Kids and Beach. Shout out Humble Park, man. You feel me? Shout out Chicago. Shout out Chi Town, man. Cause I got nothing but love. But like, I will be in Humble Park every summer my whole childhood before we moved here. So when I end up moving here, 
to the same exact place, you feel me, where I, where I used to be spending my time as an adolescent, you feel me, like, now I end up residing there, so it was all love, man, like, you know, like, gang banging stuff is real, you feel me, but at the same time, it's a lot of love out here, and that's what people don't promote, they, they don't promote the love and what we do and the unity and stuff like that, they just want that misrepresentation of Chirac and keep you in that, that living in fear and stuff, but it's nothing like that, man, come check it out, man, come holla at us, you feel me? True. Chicago, you got to stay safe and alert, you know, still, I mean, no matter where you are, I don't care if you're in Bucktown, whatever, be aware, be alert. And I feel like when people come here, they be like, like, you don't pay attention to your own hometown. Like, you come here and be like, oh, now I got to turn my awareness on. I'm like, come on, man, you're tweaking. So I know you have a lot of discipline because you were in the Army, correct? Yeah, yeah, for a few years. I, well, I'm not, a, man, because I, I don't want to take any credit or I don't want to disrespect any, like, real veterans or anything. I was I was reserved. I did the National Guard some slight for a few years and everything. I'm very appreciative of the time and the you know the experience that I've learned and everything, the knowledge that I, I gained from it, you know. But you still did it. That's what yeah, matters. Still yeah, did it. What's yeah. what's one of the biggest lessons you took away from that though? Thank you, thank you, thank you. No. Uh integrity, man, cause uh and it's crazy because we're going through this like racial, you know, you know, injustice going on right now because we went through something similar, like, in the Army. So it's like, you know, us as black folks, a lot of people, you know, they use the N-word. You know, they say the word nigga. So it's like we had a couple of Caucasian males that would use that word, you know, and then some black people took offense to it. And it was like it, it, it almost became a race war in the middle of my in the middle of our company. You know, I was an Echo Company. Shout out Echo Company. 92 Alpha, man. Yeah, you feel me? Uh, but uh, yeah, man. So and it had to be broken down to us. You feel me? Because it was like a, it was just it became like a pure hatred thing. But the drill sergeant calmed it down, and he 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 firmly explained it. Like, man, y'all y'all call each other niggas all day, every day. Like, even I hear all y'all do is say nigga. So it's like, how y'all blaming somebody for see for, for somebody else using the word? You know? So it's like definitely and not a racial slur or nothing like that. And I understand that, but it's like, man, I don't know, man. Some people, man, you can't. Words is powerful, but at the same time, words can only affect a person that doesn't have a powerful mind. If your power, if your mind is more powerful than somebody's words, then you will not be ill affected, and it would not, it would not break you. You feel me? And that's what people need to learn. I need to learn that. I'm still learning. You gotta grow every day. That's what matters. So, all right, let's get back to the music. What are you working on right now? You got a project coming out? I know you got about 50 songs in the vault upstairs. I know because I record them. You know what I'm saying? At this point, man, to be honest, like. Man, I don't even know what I'm doing, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going for the ride right now, man. Like right now, and it's just like the experiences. That's that's pretty much like, cause yes, I'm doing it for music. I'm working on music. I have projects, you know, that's coming real soon. I don't have music currently, but at the same time, I feel like a lot of artists need to learn this, man. You feel me? I could teach, I could teach a lot of artists coming up, man. Definitely like up and coming artists, man. Cause it's all a, it's all a mentality and mindset, levels. So it's like a lot of people feel entitled. You think you're the man, even if you are the man, it's like people, a lot of artists these days, it's like, you don't, you don't, you're not hating, but in the same way, you're still a hater. But that's like me trying not to be racist. I'm still being racist in a way, you feel me? So it's like, if I'm not trying to be a hater, you're still being a hater in a way because you're thinking so hard about it and trying not to look like it and disguise it. So it's like a lot of art, a lot of artists, they won't, first of all, they won't come to shows or events if they're not performing. You feel me? They could care less, you feel me? If, even if they do come and perform, they don't talk to nobody. They think they just the, the man or the woman or you, you, you it, you feel me? And that's cool and all, but it's like, man, like, you have to start, like, I started from the back, I started off supporting, man, like, man, people, people even even know me, people still don't know me from my music, people know me from just supporting their shows and supporting my homies and stuff like that, man, that's like, that's, that's what, that's what it's more about than me, like, because people get it mixed and, mixed and twisted, like, man, like, I'm, luckily, I'm, 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 I'm blessed enough to be with a collective, so I guess I don't have to think about that, like, just isolated mindset and just soul mindset. But at the same time, like, I just, like, I like seeing people around me succeed, man. <laughs> like, I don't I don't know why people don't like seeing that. People turn it into, like, competitiveness and or they just, like, pure hatred or they're, like, jealous or envy or whatever it is. But it's like, I, I can't feel that. I just feel nothing but love, man. The only two, the only, the only three things I feel, man, is, is love, anger, and and fucking sorrow, you feel me? Sympathy. So it's like I can't. Hate is not in me. 
hate is not in me, man. Like I said, I'm a God fearing man, so God is love. So that's what I try to represent, man. You were just hating on me earlier. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. No, but I like how you said that people know you're a supporter, but I will tell you that from what I see, you're one of the only artists I know that has fans, but you don't have music out, if that makes sense. We would go out to perform at open mics, travel to Michigan, shout out True Classic in Ann Arbor, hey. Indianapolis. You shared the stage, uh, the stage with Jay at the Red Man and the Method Man show. And I'll Jay the artist. And people would literally come, man, where can I find your music? And he'd be like, nowhere. <laughs> but that's dope, though, because those same people, I've seen them show up to more shows that you were on, and they came to support you, even though they can't even bump your music, but they're going to wait till the next show to be like, man, I'm going to see him perform again, and I'm going to do jumping jacks with him. When we did uh, Auxiliary Art Center, on your birthday, yeah, on your birthday. Yeah. I hey, folks, back in the day, you had to save money to go get an album, you know, go to the store, wait in line. So live performance is like, that's where you, that's where you really shine. I've seen people on Instagram with like, oh, I got 30,000 followers, I got 40,000. And then we see them live in person perform. What is the first time you did this? awkward, lip syncing, rapping over, like, don't. It was like, it was, it was definitely improv. Like, it was definitely, that was definitely like some type of just, like, I don't even know where it came from. I think it's just goofing around or something like that. Maybe I, th maybe I did it in the crib one time or something like that. You know? Something. Oh yeah, I, I need to do that. I gotta and, do that. And and, and 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 this is one thing I'm gonna say, man. Rehearse, man. Practice, man. Don't be out here being no Michael Vicks and no AIs because y'all probably not don't have the talent or or is capable or have the things that these people are. So it's like, man, talent, man. Rehearse, man. Practice, man. Stop going over your lyrics, man. Stop relying on your lyrics. Stop relying on your homies to back you up, man. Because if anything, if anything, you have to be mentally prepared. You have to be physically prepared as well. Because what if the music is not there? Then what you're not going to perform because you rap over your lyrics all the time. So it's like, man, come on, man. That's not entertainment. I base myself off. I pure, that's where it came from, man. How can I be entertaining, man? Like, how could I make it fun as possible and leave, like, almost like, a, like some type of... Pressure. Memorial in their head. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm say I'm not saying the same thing, but like almost like a memorial monument in their head. You feel me? Like, cause all they're gonna remember is like, man, who was that dude doing jumping jacks, man? Like, and they don't even have to be listening to the song. They could, they could, they could be on their phones the whole time and everything, and then I just bust out and the jumps. Like, hey, yeah, this guy's pretty funny, you know. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know. <laughs> all right, how about? I'm going to ask you a similar question I did with uh, No Montana. Uh, uh, let me get a little groupie story. Or not even a groupie story. Somebody just, just acting crazy around you as soon as you got off stage. Like, their demeanor completely changed as soon as they seen you perform. Yeah, because with the groupies, I'm going uh, to exercise my Fifth Amendment, and uh, <laughs> I don't answer questions. You feel me? One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to put a disclaimer at the bottom. But, man, um... Man, to be honest with you, I don't be I don't be paying attention, man. I be I be caught in the moment, man. So it's like it will it wouldn't even be a time for me performing. It will be a time for me just like experiencing like turning up to like one of y'all performing or something like that. And it's like I do it so much, like I just every time it's like a baby at the candy store for me. So it's like when I see my homies like doing their thing and just going crazy and I see the crowd going crazy, it's like, man, I wanna make sure that people know I'm with these guys. Like, man, I'm with these guys. You feel me? I came with these guys. You feel me? Like, and people, and that's crazy, man. That's where that's where it comes back to hating, man. Like, if your people look at you as a competitor, that's not your homie, man. That's not your brother, man. You feel me? I don't compete with none of mine, man. And I share love to anybody, any and everybody, man. Like, any stranger, no stranger danger with me. It's universal precaution, but it's universal love precaution in, in, in that way. You feel me? Because I'm just showing love unlimitedly. You feel me? That's straight up. That's straight up. I respect that. So, moving forward, what we got planned for the rest of the year, for 2020 and 2021? You going to record about 100 more songs? Uh, man, I'm going to make 100 more beats. We cut 100 more songs that y'all are never going to hear. You feel me? <laughs> hey, I'm going to be I'm gonna be one of them dudes that you ain't never going to hear no music until I die. And so you be like, man, who was this guy? Yeah, he died. You feel me? Hey, damn, who was him? I ain't never heard of him. Yeah, he died last week and everything. You feel me? Yeah. You going <laughs> to... He's he's gonna leave me he's gonna leave me a note at the studio. Release my two hundred songs yeah. now. But shout out shout out Scotty Rocks man. Shout out Essay. Shout out Julian. Uh, 
aka Rhymesters. Shout out Conrad, man. Shout out King. Shout out, man, everybody that's doing their thing because these are everybody that's making making an outlet for me. These are people that's giving me a platform. These are people that's giving me and creating me an opportunity. Ben, you doing your thing crazy with the sound because, man, you make, you make me sound sexy as hell, man. I be feeling, I have I don't even know how I look and I sound sexy as hell. That's the way that I make, I be sounding like in my ears like, damn, I sound sexy as hell, man. Like, damn, man. It's like, yeah, so it's like, yeah. I, I, I'll take it. I'll take it, you feel me? Half the world knows both of us, so I I take it, man. The whole world should know him. But uh, Scotty just gave us some new content through OC, yeah. man. Man, we got Familiar Faces podcast. Tune in every Wednesday, man. Make sure you check that out, man. Uh, uh, hopefully, I could uh, participate more with the Friday Night Lights, man, because I love what y'all doing here as well, man. You know, so um, we got the video. Shout out Ryan, man. He's he got a lot of content, man. If you don't know who Ryan is, man, check him out, man. Hey, we're BBE BBE Visuals. Check him out. Yeah, check him out. He got a lot of dope stuff with a with a lot of artists that we're affiliated, we're associated with, man. So man, it's it's a lot, man. Just look for me. I'm gonna be releasing some music soon with, with some visual content, man. So I'm looking forward to. I'm excited, man, because it's it's been a, it's been a little minute. So I've been putting in that work, man. Getting ready, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a super dope artist too. Check him out. So this is the Dog and Pony Show, and you're a dog whisperer. You got a, you got a few dogs, right? What kind of dogs do you have? Yeah, I got a, I got a couple of uh, rescuers, man. So uh, yeah, uh, when I say rescue, I'm not talking about like I, I call like the 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 dog shelters and stuff like that. You know that you pay 99 cents to or nothing like that. Because at the same time, like it's you need to be more aware of where your money is going to. It's I guess I guess it's cool, you know, because you want the credit to be like, yeah, I, I helped the innocent dog that's getting abused and everything. But at the same time, if that money's not really going to it. No, I guess it's the thought that matters. But man, at the same time, man, take care of the pets, any pets that you that you have. You know, make sure that you treat them like your babies, because these are not property people. Pets are not your property, man. Pets are are your kids, are your babies, are your friends, are your family members. You feel me? So, and they should be treated as such. Now, um, that what was the question, man? I just got I so passionate about the no, dogs because I love my dogs so I said much. What kind man. of dogs you got? Yeah, so I got two pits, man. So like, oh, the rescue one. Uh, my first pit, Samson, man. Shout out my boy Samson, man. Uh, I rescued I, I rescued because I bought him from a crackhead. So I would say that scratch you him, man, because you know, like, man, you know, that that was a sweet lift for me, you know. So it's like, you know, I bought him. What, did you, what did you give the crackhead? I gave the crackhead what ten dollars on a bag of a nickel a nickel bag. You feel me? He was on the on the real. He had a boy and a girl, but I picked the boy, you know. So I, I was great. I'm very grateful for that. Then I, I got a girl named Delilah. And I, I, re, I recently rescued her a few years ago. She ran up on me uh, after I was getting off uh, my job and everything like that. And I just ended up taking her, taking her home with me. And I am a dog. So it's like, you know, well, I have dog I have dog tendencies. You feel me? So it's like, that's why I say I am the dog whisperer because I am a Mac. You feel me? I used to be that player. I used to be that player pimp nigga. You feel me? So all that. You feel me? Hey, funny story. He comes in the lab and sees Keem Dog. He just... And we're, and we're looking at him like, what are you, we're like, what are you doing? He's like, he know, he know what I'm saying. It's a canine, people. It's a canine, man. So it is in the, in the, in the wolf family tree, man. So, man, I, you know, the, you have to be a little aggressive with your dog, man. You feel me? I'm not talking about beat and abuse your dog, but I'm just saying be dog with your, be a beast with your dog. You feel me? Y'all both share the same bowl at home? You both got the same food bowl? <laughs> hey, hey, it's crazy. It's crazy because strangers be walking with their dogs and stuff like that. It could be like a poodle or something like that. I mean, what's that man? You feel me? And they'll just be looking like, you know, get away from, from my dog, please. <laughs> hey, shout out your dogs, man. Respect to you for taking care of your dogs, man. Bringing them around. He brought his dog around one time. Beast, a beast. He got some beast of a dog. So, all right, we're gonna have a live performance from C Mac, but uh. What two songs is it? I don't know. Uh, roll is roll again and me. Uh, roll again, yeah. Uh, stay tuned, man. Y'all may see me do some jumping jacks. A little oh, bit, no. Man, you know? oh no! Oh no! Bust out the jumping jacks, man. I'm already sweating, man. So it's like <laughs> shit, man. <baby. laughs> All right, we're gonna be back at Friday Night Lights with C Mac giving us a live performance. Give him a dog thing. Hey. <laughs> Show me, only matter one time.
cause she act like she know me Just had to go dig her, I fucked her like she owed me Always will remember, not going back to the old me Yeah, she thinks she bad, but I know that she like me They got the haters mad, don't know why they dislike me I always be working, so it's hard to find me Just looking forward towards the future, but have to watch behind me I need it today or it's too late, because I ain't got time to play it goes two ways, like two chicks that are two gays I got to like Tuesday, not to pay them to stay I'm on the road like two skates, not ever stopping like two Breaks, I'm too great. Roll up and smoke like Michelin. This weed is more like my medicine. No relationship, but we intimate. I know she feeling it. Soon as I put it in, get her in the sad like a quarterback. Then I take off like a runner back. Soon as I leave, I'm never coming back. Stroke her from the back like a thundercat with the lump of jack. She doing jumping jacks and always coming back. Then terminated until I be back. I don't be trusting these bitches because they're not loyal So rather they give me a pass, you know I'm the best I just be getting so high like I'm about to fly in the jet Relieving the stress, I could really care less Because I don't fuck with my ex, what's coming up next? Only success, not chasing these chicks, but just catch my check I got game like a pro, but you still can't play me I can get it for the low, and you'll still have to pay me I can be your hero, nobody ever saved me I can get it on my own, so no one can make me All you smell is Smoke, all the sweet is on me. You don't even need nothing because everything is on me. All you see is money because it's always on me. I'm always showing love, but they still hate on me.